Hi, my name is David Cavill. I'm the publisher of the weekly canine newspaper, Our Dogs, and the principal of the Animal Care College. This is one of a series of talks on aspects of pedigree dogs, their health and their welfare, although this, as you will see, is rather an unusual one. Patricia Sutton, who has been involved with dogs and horses all her life, and currently a member of the Kennel Club General Committee and its training board, sometimes gives day-long illustrated lectures to demonstrate movement using horses and dogs at her livery stables near Farnham in Surrey. It is an amazing day and provides many fascinating insights into movement and the reasons for the many different conformations found in dogs, horses and other mammals. I felt that such a unique perspective deserved a unique report. So here it is, um, with apologies to uh, admirers of Rudyard Kipling. So here is another Just Stowe story. How the animals moved from one place to another without falling over. With a burning of rubber, a roaring of exhausts, an exhaustion from journeying through the valleys and the mountains and the moors and the verdant fields of grasses, many of the famous and the eminent, the distinguished and the prominent and even important, gathered, O oh best beloved, at the dwelling of the educator extraordinary breeder and exhibitor Patrician the Magician, she of the long as your arm pedigree of canine and equine expertise, and best beloved, munches were arranged, and sophisticated chilled soups, the biscuits and the cakes and the super sandwiches and thick roly rolls hit the spots and refreshed the company through the long hot learning day. So the famous and the eminent the distinguished and the prominent, and even the important, sat quiet and still and safely assembled on the sunny, sunny summer day, deep in the hills of the county of Surrey, and beneath Patrician's posh porch pavilion, with banks of flowers too, overlooking the extraordinary field of sandy gold grass where the performance was to be performed. They were to witness a new way of thinking and seeing, and were seeking guidance and insight onto how animals move from one place to another without falling over. Of course, O oh dearly beloved, you and I already know that they put pad or paw or claw or hoof or foot one in front of the other, but O oh best beloved, Patrician knows there is much more to it than that. And she was going to map the complexity of the labyrinth and disclose the deep secrets of not falling over. Suddenly, Patrician became visible with her long as your arm pedigree of knowledge, experience and expertise, which you will be pleased to know, O oh best beloved, was trailed lightly and comfortably and not poshly at all. And she greeted the famous and the eminent, the distinguished and the prominent and the important with a warm, inviting smile belying the seriousness of the subject and the secrets she was about to reveal. In the comfortable tents of the great chiefs far away in the city on the banks of the Thames, they know only how long time offspring of our wild dogs move from one place to another. Their knowledge is cribbed, cabined and confined to the canine elbow and the stifle, the canine hock and the pastern, the canine withers and the croup, and excludes all other mammals, whether they be the elephant or the rhinoceros, the leopard or the lion, the giraffe or the gnu, or even the elephant's child or the cat in the hat, dearly beloved. But these assembled famous and eminent, distinguished and prominent, and even important people, knew that the magician patrician thought outside the domestic box and understood the jungle, where the Lusitano, the Hackney, the Arabian, the Draft and the Falbella dwelt, and also knew, dearly beloved, that horses had much to teach those with open, inquiring minds. Horses are bigger than dogs, and this is a goodly thing if you want to see how they move from one place to another without falling over. When a horse moves, you can see, O oh best beloved, the way the frame and the bones of the skeleton and the muscles and the skin work with, and sometimes even against, one another. One shod front hoof is put in front of the other shod front hoof and the back hoof moves in time to keep its balance and its equilibrium to maintain its stability and steadiness. And so it stays steady and does not fall over. 
Even a large, smooth dog, it's much smaller than a horse, except it be a little miniature horse, of course. So with the poor eyesight of the elderly, most of the famous and the eminent and the distinguished and the prominent, even the important are elderly, it is much easier to see how the working mechanics and complicated levers and machinery of the bones and the skeletons and the muscles work in the bigger animal straight out of the jungle. And the magician could point to the bones, which are levers, and the muscles, which contract and pull, moving the bones and demonstrate and show and present how one works with another so the beast does not fall over when it moves. But there were some smaller animals too, to show how small is beautiful and can be balanced as well. But beware, like the jungle animals, it is not necessarily so dearly beloved. Their bones and their muscles are the same, but when some bones are shorter and fit together at different angles, their shape and their balance and their stability change, as does the way they stop themselves falling over. The magician Pretending she knew little about the Leonine Leoburgers, the spirited St Bernards and the fearsome Rottweilers, but not really fearsome children, they are pussycats underneath, showed the dissimilarity and the divergence and the differentiations and the deviation in the breeds and it transformed the vision of the famous and the eminent, the distinguished and the prominent and the important. Everything she had been elucidating became as crystal clear as the fresh springs at the source of the Nile, which as I know you all know, is the, at the purest depths of the darkest African jungle. And then some beautiful beagles and fancy foxhounds paraded for the assembled company, which Patricia and the musician knew a great deal about, and I mean an enormous amount. Oh dearly loved, she is greatly admired throughout the many important eminent communities she leads, near and far from the hunts of Sandhurst to the comfortable tents of the great chiefs far away in the city on the banks of the Thames. And the beautiful beagles and the fancy foxhounds walked and they trotted and they ambled and they strode, they sauntered and they single suspended and they double suspended and galloped too. And as they did so, Patricia and the magician pointed to their moving parts with a stroke and a pat here, and an explanation, a clarification, a rationalisation, and an illumination there, till all manner of hidden secrets about moving from one place to another without falling over were revealed. As one would expect of a magician, dearly beloved, it was an exquisitely magical day. And should Patricia and the magician deign to reveal her secrets in the future, my dears, you should bear the exhaustion and journey through the valleys and the mountains and the moors and the verdant fields to the deepest depths of Surrey, to sit at her feet in her posh porch pavilion overlooking the extraordinary field of sandy gold trass, to learn all there is to learn about animals moving from one place to another without falling over.